Hi guys and girls, Mr. Smoo here, and welcome to the Beginner's Guide for Valheim. And what we have here is a starting screen just after you've made your first character. It's nice and easy um, to jump straight into this game. Um, you can see there's a few options here for you. Um, you can just start your server and have a server password if you want to play with your friends on your Steam or, or wherever else and this game might be coming out. Um, and then there's a community server there, an option there that you can select if you want other people to join. Um, and so yep, yeah, once you create your character, there are your two options. I believe you can do a single player if you uh, unclick that. You don't even need a server password then. I think that's just completely single player. Um, I always just start a server and, and add a password anyway. Um, and yeah, click the start button. And there we go, I've I've spawned into the world. Now everything in this game is subject to change, it's still early access, but there's a lot of content for an early access game. And when you first start out, you're gonna think, wow, this game's uh, fairly easy. You're probably gonna if you have a start like I did anyway, I thought wow, this game's so easy, like any survival game you play, what you do when you first come into the world, you go around, you look for rocks, you punch trees, you do things like that. Well this game, um, it's only different in the sense that you have to go around looking for things like this. Let's see this stone here, pick up. Just keep doing this, press E on things to pick stuff up. So we've got stone, we'll be looking for wood when we first start out. Another key thing that you want to be looking for when you're new is flint, and that's always found near water. Any water sources will always have flint nearby. Um, there's often another resource nearby water, which is tin, which you'll need later on in the game. And if you're wondering, how do I um, create like a pickaxe so I can, I can start mining all of these stone nodes and copper, you'll find copper nodes and tin nodes, all kinds of nodes as you progress through the game. Uh, we have to defeat the first boss before you can actually get a pickaxe. Um, I'll just run across here, I've built a little bridge there as you can see, I'm just trying to find some flint. If you do come across an enemy, um, they'll most likely be these grey dwarfs that you may see soon. Um, normally come after me down this area but you can literally use your fists and if you can't just try and run away um, just trying to find some flint oh there's some flint there the flint looks like that and you, I've got no room in the inventory but yeah so you just pick the flint up and uh, rinse and repeat you get into your branches and everything like that and yeah and then what you would do is you would go into your inventory page which I believe when you first start is the tab button. I've rebinded my keys, so there's lots of options for rebind, which is, is nice. Um, but yeah, I press I, and it brings up this menu here, and it gives you a crafting menu here. First thing you're going to want to create is a hammer. This enables you to start building. I'll show you how to use it now. It's up here. I've got the hammer here, so it's in hammer mode at the moment, so I can repair stuff. So long as I'm in the vicinity of a crafting bench, um, that's a forge there. Um, crafting bench, this, and that's another thing that you will, will want to build fairly soon. Um, what I would recommend as well is trying to get a base set up near the way you start the game, because you'll be starting very close to these rune stones up here. You can see I've marked it on the map first home. And that's another good point actually. Something I didn't know when I first came into the game was that you could actually put your own custom waypoints on the map and that really did make a difference. As you can see, I've marked copper nodes around, and you can actually left click them once you've been there and they're cleared. But that's also really handy so you can cross stuff off that you've done. Yeah, look, simple double click, I can put anything in there that I want. Um, and if you want to get rid of that, so I can just type let's pretend I found some copper and hit enter. Simple right click will remove that waypoint. But yeah, so you'll be, be starting around this area here. Obviously, your map's going to be different to mine. You should start in the meadows if you look at the top right of my screen there's a mini map and um, the top right says meadows there that's that's the noob area really if you don't start anywhere apart from the meadows you're gonna have uh, a rough time um yeah and to zoom in to that map the comma and full stop screen see my mini map moving there you can use the comma and full stop to actually zoom in and out of your mini map which is also a nice little addition i believe the little arrow on the bottom left of the mini map is the wind direction you can see little wisps flying past me obviously heading in the opposite direction of my character now and if you look at the map wait 
wind blowing, which comes in very handy when you're actually on a boat. However, there is a separate uh, wind icon for when you're on a boat. Another thing is food, obviously. When you first start, you're going to want to eat some food. It's not essential in this game to survive, but you do need it because different food provides different buffs to your character in the way of food and uh, health and stamina, sorry. So, have a little hover over this raspberry here. You can see it gives me 10 health, 20 stamina. It lasts for 600 seconds and it heals me only 1 HP per tick. Now, you can't spam food in this game, so I can't just look. I'm going to eat some meat. This is my number 8 slot at the top left of my hot bars, you can see there. But I'm going to spam 8. Spamming 8, what does it say? You can't eat more cooked meat. You can only eat one type of food. Well, you could eat free meats, but they have to be different. Um, so now, look, I'll eat some blueberries. And I'll eat... There you go. You can see at the bottom left now that my health has increased. My stamina bar has actually increased as well. Move around a lot. Another very handy thing that you will want to be doing before you head out um, is obviously build yourself a little base. Um, how I normally build bases, I will just plop down a workbench. So you will bring up your, you'll get your crafting hammer out. You'll right click, it'll bring up a list of tabs in here, as you can see. And you want to go to the crafting tab and you want to build this workbench. Now this workbench enables you to build structures. Um, so in the building tree here, you have to be within the vicinity of the workbench. It does have a circle, and if you're out of that circle, you won't be able to build. I'm just going to try and give you an example. Um, okay. Oh, you saw it there. You see the little white lines? That big radius? Well, yeah. See that? Diameter. Yeah. You, you can't build out that area from wherever you put it. Yeah. First thing I do is put one of them down, and then I get to work on my building. So I'll build my structure. I'd probably recommend you build something not too small, just like a decent size, so you can fit a few things in there. Your first time now, I don't know, like a hmm, maybe a six by six or something like that. Um, and you may need to provide support for your structure as well. There are a little bit of physics you see here. I've got these. Uh, Holes going down just to give a little bit of support to the structure. You will need to do things like that at some point, otherwise, you'll be placing things down and they'll just break instantly. Now, on wood structures, mine's a little got a little bit of stone in there. I can't actually craft with stone yet, I haven't learned how to, but I found this in the world and started building from it. Now, if you don't build a roof on your wood structure, everything will start to decay. Rain will get to it and it will start to rot away. Um, it's a simple repair if, you, if you're in. Are within the vicinity of your workbench, you can go up to it. I think you need some wood in the tree, um, and then you you just repair it. Mine's all okay because obviously I've got a good roof on it um, that protects it. Um, I'll try and give an example of this. I'll run down to my bridge because my bridge is exposed, and I do have to do repairs to it. Otherwise, it will just uh, decay away. Oh, and deers! If you want to hunt deers, oh, press the control key and you'll crouch. You can sneak like this. I'm mean, in front of him, so I might spook him. I should be doing this from behind, really. But yeah, look, right up close to him, and then just whack him. Okay, I've missed there, but you get the point. Um, let's see if I can get this guy. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to. Um, yeah, so that's how you do it. Sneak up, nice and sneaky, when you're first starting out. Boars, on the other hand, they're fairly easy. Uh, you can just run up to them and start attacking them. You probably will in the fight with your fists. So you can you can do that. Um, I'll just quickly show you this. Yeah. Oh no, I've already repaired all this. Oh, there's a little bit of bit of wear. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not decayed as fast as I thought it was going to, but it's uh, it does decay. Uh, yeah. So once you've built your little home, anyway, you're going to want to get a bed. Why do you want a bed? Well, most survival games like Rust, things like that, that's where you spawn, isn't it? Um, where is the bed? Furniture, there's the bed there. And uh, yeah, so once you've placed your bed down, um, you just press E on it, and you will be able to set that as your bed. Um, once it's there as your bed, you can sleep in it, if you want to skip time, or you can do. 
You'll notice now that I'm inside a structure, so once you're inside a structure and you've got a roof on it, you also need to build a chimney that works because you will get smoked out if you don't. So you see this sort of setup I've got here. I've got a tube that leads straight up from the outside. Also something of note is that you can't actually place a campfire down on a wooden floor. It needs to be stone or there needs to be no floor there. So when you're building, um, build your floor as normal, but then just destroy um, a part of the floor. So if you had a wood structure, let's see if I can quickly build a wood. Got a little bit of wood. Let me just place that on the floor. Won't know to place a fire on it, watch this. They won't let you place fire on, on the floor, which makes sense. So yeah, you'll need to destroy that. Good structure is normal, destroy it, and then you'll be able to just plop your fire down. Yeah, if you want to remove any items that you've placed, you just get your repair hammer out, go up to it, and then just middle mouse click, and it'll destroy that item. So let's say I want to get rid of this. There it goes. Destroyed. Okay, so once you've got your your little crafting bench set up and uh, maybe you've started to, to construct a house your workbench will probably be outside um, that's no problem I'd, I'd recommend starting it with it outside and then you can build around it um, you probably want to create like an axe so you can chop down trees and not wood that way just go up to your crafting bench press D all the options are here that you can create you can also upgrade weapons and armors here um, so once you're here Yep, just try and find your, your stone axe most likely, um, to start with. Um, create that, and then you can start getting some wood. And then there's also a flint axe, which is slightly better, which I'd recommend getting as soon as you can, but you need some flint for that, obviously. You can also repair items using this button right here. Obviously, you want a weapon to, to defend yourself. A club is actually, surprisingly, pretty strong, and you can get more powerful with all kinds of weapons in this game. It has a skill system which is located here, I believe, which you can see here is with the skills. They level up as you do more things with them. Um, so yeah, with that covered, once you've actually got your house set up, there's a nice little rested buff up the top right, so once you've got that, that'll give you plenty of stamina. You have to stay in your house and have that resting thing at the top. I've got 11 minutes of rested. Um, so yep, now I can run around with lots of stamina regen. As well, when you start in the game, you'll see the relic area here, when you kill your first boss, you'll get a head from a head from him, and you'll be putting that head on one of the relics there, which will then give you a skill. A skill down the bottom left. Uh, then you can use that, and that also benefits you. You also run faster, guys, when your weapons are holstered. So there is a key binding to holster weapons in the options. So find that and um, rebind it. Mine set to tab, which will probably be your inventory. So yeah. Just press tab, get your weapon away, and you'll run faster. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this beginner's guide useful. If you did, give us a thumbs up and drop a comment.